Hello everyone, welcome to the semi-finals of Grand Prix Quebec City 2013. Rich Hagen, Marshall Sutcliffe with you. Marshall, we've got Nico Christensen against Reed Duke Blink and you'll miss it because here comes Nico Christensen and he's away with a turn one play just like he does every single time. Yeah, he's got 12 one drops in the deck. A Boros Elite is an excellent start for him. It's not as good as a champion of the parish. That's what he'd ideally like here, but a Boros Elite is going to mount a very quick offensive. Reed Duke... Uh, is going to be Atmosphere. looking to play the control route, uh, the control role in this matchup, and bang, huh. right out of the gates. Burning Tree Emissary into Mayor of Averbrook. The Boros Elite gets bigger. Battalion is on the way next turn, unless Reed Duke has, let's say, an abrupt decay available. That's right. Which would be an ideal turn to play from him. Uh, Reed Duke, his deck is looking ideally, now not in this matchup, but in a, in a normal scenario, to play Farseek right here. Uh, you can see the problem with that. Uh, yeah, and instead, here's a much better idea. Tragic slip for the Mayor of Averbrook. Turns off Battalion, saves any amount of damage. Well worth a, a wasted, air quotes, turn. Absolutely. And the fact that another land comes into play uh, without causing Reed any life loss, good news. He's going to take three. Yeah, he knows He knows that Nico doesn't have Lightning Mauler in hand because he would have played that last mm -hmm. turn instead of the Mayor. Does have, though. Big standout from Gatecrash. Frontline Medic. You see the Boros watermark clearly on the card. Yep. So that's going to prevent Bonfire of the Damned, for the most part, from Reed Duke. And, and that is a card that Reed can use to help clear the entire board. Remember, the cards from Nico Christensen aren't that big on his turn off. And like, you look at a Boros Elite right there, and it just sits there as a 1-1. One -one. It's pretty susceptible to getting Bonfired. Put it under 13. A third black and green mana available for Reed Duke. Murder the frontline medic. So Reed, despite having no red, is sitting there and he's going to fall. Well, it's going to be uh, into 10 coming up right yep, now. Three there. And now what else does Nico Christensen have? If That's he ever gets question. to Battalion, this one's going to be done. Especially now, Boris Elite, does he have redundancy? He doesn't. He's again at three creatures. He needs to attack with three creatures to make those Boris Elites big. Yeah, this is a big turn for Reed Duke. If he can play something like Hunt Master of the Fells, it's going to be a nice one for him. Get him a little bit of a life cushion. There's Red there's Mana. Red Mana. There's Hunt Master. All right, so Hunt Master is a good start. It's not going to just be the huge stop sign that something like a Thrag Tusk would be here, no. as those Boros Elite are each going to be bigger than each of the two twos on the other side of the table. Yeah. They are both three threes when they attack because of Battalion Trigger. It says when it attacks with two or more other attackers, it becomes Ooh, he's a got a pre-combat play here. This Has could be he? a Lightning Mauler. Yeah, let's see. Is, it could also be... Oh, it is Lightning Mauler. Mauler. That's going to pair up with the Burning Tree Emissary. In we go. Battalion Triggers. 3-3, three, 3-3, three, 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 piling in. Super pressure on Reed again now. So the question becomes, can he just put a token in away? Or is he going to have... No. That's what he's looking at. Huntmaster, opposite Lightning Mauler. Burning Tree Emissary, opposite Wolf Token. There are no tricks available to Reed. He's tapped out. Christensen right. has tricks available. He has giant he growth giant potential. Giant growth. Here it there is. it is. Giant growth to get past the Huntmaster of the Fells. <laughs> He is going to take six damage, but most importantly, this maintains battalion for uh, Nico Christensen and right, sets Reed. up a lethal attack next turn. Thrag Tusk would be fantastic. No Something like Olivia there. Voldaren would be not quite enough here. He would still be alive. Down to four. He goes down to four, and it is Thrag Tusk. Right. Right back up to nine. Up to nine. Well, oh, right. So he's back at a virtual I mean, four here. Uh huh. All right, so whatever Nico Christensen has drawn here is a big, big deal. By the way, Marshall. Yes. Do you know what would be really good in this standard meta game in some decks? What's that? Act of Treason. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, Just thought I'd mention it. Oh, wow. So he's found flint hoof boar. a flint hoof boar. Tie it up he with the lightning up. He's going to block the boar. That's two, three, four, five, five six, six, seven, seven eight. eight. <laughs> Read at one. Reads at one. He's facing down three different creatures, so Reed Duke is going to need to find a way to sweep these away or hit another Thrag Tusk here. Bonfire off the top. A Mysium Mortis, for example. Bonfire in his hand would do it. We know he doesn't have it. Would have <laughs> played it last turn. Yeah. 
And four, four mana. mana. Is this a hunt, master? a hunt master to take him to three with a? It's an Olivia Vuldarn, okay. but he needs another play, and, and he has it with okay. an Okay, all right, still alive. Oh He's man, like he is barely alive here. Christensen draws two cards in hand. Can he seal the deal? If he attacks with everything, in. Reed can trade boards with him. He can say block, 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 and everything and trades. Reed's looking. But block. Reed doesn't want to do that. He's going to chump block. Okay. Reed wants to keep Olivia Voldarn alive. If he gets to untap with it, it's it a can route kill to all of his creatures. Okay, so Reed matches them up. Block, block, block. And you're absolutely right. So Reed takes zero damage that turn, is sitting at one. Now, we've seen Nico Christensen with the uh, Searing Spear. Basically, every time we've had him on camera, he doesn't have it here, though. Okay. And all of a sudden, Reed Duke has fully stabilized at one. He's still not out of the woods yet. <laughs> there's haste creatures. There's a lot yeah. of, there's one card in hand for Nico Christensen. So there's a lot that could go wrong here. But Reed Duke is looking actually to be in a winning position here as he can kill. Look at him, hands on his face. This is intense. Yeah. You don't want to mess this up. Thing is, there's four searing spear mm -hmm. for Nico Christensen. That's right. There's four flint of boar. There's four. I mean, you know. The, the real question here is when does Reed start turning yeah. Olivia Voldarin sideways? He can kill the Boros Elite yeah, right yeah. now. Which is what's going to happen. Uh -huh. Let's make that get out. He, the way. he wants to take away any giant growth effects as, as outs. Mm -hmm. And he's going to play a Farseek post Olivia Voldarin activation. Mm -hmm. And it does, you just start attacking. He can put Nico on a four turn, more likely a three turn clock. Yeah. Uh, if he starts attacking now. And Nico. You know, again, the, the Searing Spear is irrelevant to Reed Duke. If he draws it, he's dead. If Nico uh -huh. draws it, he's just dead. That's it. It's so uh, it's what other cards is he going to so play around? So it's Lightning Mauler with something else. It needs to be paired to Have Haste mm -hmm. or Flint Hoof Boar are, two, are the two things I think that, that Reed Duke is going to be thinking of the most here. I'd like to look at your graveyard so I can work out how many of what are left. Mm -hmm. And, of course, the thing is, it's still... Although it's very advanced, this game, there aren't that many cards that have been played. Eight cards there in the graveyard and four land on the table, one card in hand. That's 13. So it's only a quarter, barely, of Christensen's deck that's been gone through. All right, so Reed. Oh, wow. He does that every time. Unbelievable. S the searing spear. Reed Duke, gone. Goodness wow. gracious That's me. incredible. Every single time Nico needs that spear, he finds it right off the top of his deck. It took him one, one extra turn. Reed decide to play it cautious and play around the foot hoof boar as he could wait one turn and activate and steal a boar if it were to come down, and then he could get in that damage later. So he decided to wait. He also would have three activations of Olivia Voldarin up, and uh, it didn't matter. We are, spear is what it was going to be We are in anyway. the land of hockey, and that was Jeez. high sticking of... <laughs> Excellent. Goodness me. Uh, that's awesome. So let's get you to Su Chinquo, Felipe Tabia Becerra. Phenomenal for both these players, both coming on from the Pro Tour at Gate Crash Montreal last week. Quo with Reanimator. You're seeing a Grizzly Salvage resolve right now. Uh, with reasonable success for Quo, there's a Fiend Hunter and an Undercity Informer alongside three land. I see um, a couple of angels up in the graveyard yep. already. Angel of Glory's Rise is a key piece to the combo. Indeed. And, and there's also a Burning Tree Emissary already there as well. So at this point, if there is either uh, an Umbrero Rites in hand for Tuchin Quo or one in his graveyard, he can win the game pretty easily, considering the fact that Felipe cannot actually cast any regular spells. <laughs> He's got three cavernous souls. <laughs> I'm yeah. sure they're all on zombie because he just cast uh -huh. a, a Jirouse messenger. Jirouse messenger. So there it is. I see it in his hand. And here we go. That's um, the combo. Oh, right. And that's game. game. over. Bang. Wow. This is coming <laughs> very quickly here. Thick and fast. Now, we didn't get to see Quo. the whole combo go off, but Tu Ching Quo was about to mill out his opponent completely. Felipe... Uh, <coughs> conceded because he knows how the combo works. He knows that Tu Ching Kuo isn't going to mess it up, and he doesn't necessarily need to show uh, Tu Ching Kuo everything. Now, that being said, they do get to see each other's deck lists, I believe. Before. Yes, here they are, just so uh, about oh yeah, to there we go right share there. the other way and, and, and check. So now the, the, the game begins <laughs> with the whole sideboard thing. Yeah. Uh, so the gist of that combo is that your Burning Tree Emissary, that's generating your mana. Just 
make sure I'm doing this right, Marshall. Sure. So, Berlin Trimestry is all about mana. Yep. That's what gives you enough mana to do what you want to do. That's right. Under City Informer is a sacrifice out, but you pay one, you sacrifice a creature, you mill a player, that's in, you see cards from the top of their deck until they hit a land. That can be either player, you can target yourself during the game, eventually in the combo, you're actually going to target your opponent and start milling them away. That's right. Fiend Hunters come into play with a trigger. They enter the battlefield to exile a creature. You're going to choose your own Angel of Glory's Rise. So Angel of Glory's Rise goes away. Yep. At that point, you're going to generate some mana. You're going to sacrifice a Fiend Hunter. That's right. To the Undercity Informer mm -hmm. and mill your opponent for a little bit. Fiend Hunter is now in the graveyard. You're going to sacrifice Burning Tree Emissary to the Undercity Informer to mill a little bit more, put that back into the graveyard. Yeah, you do it the other way. Oh, uh, sure. Uh huh. Yeah. You do the Emissary yep. first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. And eventually, having got rid of the Fiend Hunter, Angel of Glory's Rise, as it must, comes back into play. It triggers. It says, put all your humans from the graveyard back into play. It and also, that by the way, I, I'll, I'll interrupt yeah. after the. Uh, go ahead, finish sure. that up. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, and at that point, of course, you've got Fiend Hunters coming back. You've got Undercity Informers coming back. Um, you've got uh, Burning Tree Emissaries coming back. The Fiend Hunter, once again, gets to look at Angel of Glory's Rise, gets to send that away. You go back into Sacrifice mode. Because you, you get the two mana, cards, and, and off you go. And it's the mana from Burning Tree Emissary that makes all of this infinite, because you never run out of mana, and ultimately you loop this round and round and round, and you run your opponent out of cards. At which point... And we haven't mentioned Huntmaster of the Fells, which can gain you two life every time it comes back, and a wolf every time it comes back. So yes. theoretically, you have infinite life and infinite wolves. But more importantly, you pass the turn, and your opponent goes to their draw step, and there are no cards there to draw. If you're made to draw a card and you have no cards to draw, you lose the game, and that's that. That's right, and that is exactly how that works. You know, Undercity Informer being a key piece of the puzzle, because... It not only is a sacrifice outlet, it's also a win condition. Mm -hmm. And it, putting those two things together is what makes this deck possible. Sure. Now, one of the things that, you know, I, I rudely interrupted you, and it's because I had a realization that uh -huh. <laughs> we've got Tzu Chinquo playing against zombies. <laughs> and uh, if, if you take the time <laughs> to read Angel's <laughs> Glorious Rise, it, it doesn't yeah. just bring your humans back. No, that's the second bit. <laughs> mm -hmm. It also says, exile all zombies. Bye. Exile. Like, you're not yep. getting that Dwarf's Messenger back. Yeah, no Grave Crawlers mm -hmm. coming back. And this isn't one of those, you know, Fiend Hunter triggers where if the Fiend Hunter leaves play, you get, they're just gone. That's it. Once yep. that thing enters, there's a triggered ability that does both of those things. Exiles all zombies and then returns all human creature cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. So, you know, we've known, we've seen this time and time again that this deck has won through the combo. We just saw it on camera. It also can just reanimate an Angel of Glory's Rise and make an awesome board state. And in this case, it's going to be double awesome because all basically all of Felipe's creatures are also zombies. Okay, so both games just about to kick off their game two. We're going to take you back uh, to game two between Nico Christensen and Reed Duke, not least because that may well finish quicker. Reed Duke will be on the play, and he has begun with a stomping ground. It's going to be tapped, so he will stay at 20 life. Let's take you over to that match, and we see Cavern of Souls on turn one, and no turn one play wow. from Christensen. That is extraordinary, because he kept seven. Oh, uh, no. Looks like he mulligan to six. Mulligan to six. Um, that okay. would explain a little that more helps about not seeing it. Yeah. But Three even then, more with more 12 one-drops, you'd think that he, he would have on. one. Three more people. It's really critical to getting this, this deck going. As we see now, Reed Duke being on the play, having that luxury, and also not even facing down a one drop. He gets to play a Farseek, which is going to get him in a position to start casting some really powerful spells a lot earlier and with a lot more life in the bank than he was uh, able to last game. We see that he draws an experiment one, so mm -hmm. a little awkward there. Human again. Cavern number two. Both of those caverns are on human. Yep. Burning Tree Emissary into Mayor of Averbrook. Okay, well, that'll help explain the keep a little bit. Yep, because that's a completely fine. Yeah, that's pretty legit. Turn two. 
All right, so this is a big turn for Reed. He can play Olivia Voldarn or Huntmaster of the Fells. In this case, it's Huntmaster. Yep, so that will send Reed to 22 as he gets a wolf as well. Very much advantage Reed Duke early in game two. It needs to be because he needs to equalize to force a game three, mm -hmm. which would see Christensen on the play. That's going to be pretty explosive if we get there. Emissary turns sideways. So three damage coming at Reed Duke. He could decide to double block and trade his Huntmaster for it, or he can just take it. Sure, because he knows that uh, Christensen can't giant growth. That's right. Sun Petal Grove comes down. Ooh. And now Thalia, interesting. Thalia is going to be helpful. Looking to make Reed Duke pay more for his non-creature spells. We see that there's a Garrick Primal Hunter in Reed Duke's hand. He mm -hmm. was probably had some, some plans to slam some that. Some thoughts of that coming down yeah. this turn? Not going to happen. Also, any, any attacks that Reed wanted to make this turn aren't going to happen, but it looks like Reed is just going to pass a turn. Start. Upkeep. Transform, Transform yeah, his Huntmaster into a Ravager. Yeah. Two to you and hit the Mayor for two. Wow. That was nice. <laughs> Considering <laughs> yeah, that was. Reed played nothing on his turn, that's pretty good. <laughs> and interesting that he doesn't care enough about Thalia. To aim the two damage there. Yeah. More land starting to come now for Christensen. He uh, makes an experiment one. What is he following up with? Uh, another flint hoof bore. One card, right? He's uh, just going to pass the turn. Remember that mirror of Averbrook bottom right of your screen is in the graveyard. It kind of looks like it's in the line of creatures, but very much not. By the way, from far away, Flint Hoof Boar and Mayor of Averbrook look very similar. Oh, <laughs> Do yeah. you see that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I pass the turn. Yeah. All right, so what's happening is he's, he wants to get his uh, trigger on Experiment 1. Spent four to murder Thelma. But it looks like it was too late. He had already uh, passed the turn, apparently. Okay, so murder on Thalia. So he missed the trigger. And Thalia gets murdered. Two spells were cast by Nico, so Huntmaster is back in effect. Two more life and another sure. wolf. Yeah, and look, Nico's down to one card here. Reed has is that four in hand. Looks like he has a stranglehold here. Plus a good board presence. I would expect to see a Garrick Primal Hunter here. I don't know what his other options are, but they're probably all quite good. It looks like he's leading. He's going to start attacking soon. I think what we're going to do, because it looks like Reed's in pretty strong position here as he lays Garrett Primal Hunter. He's got his Huntmaster. He's got tokens of plenty. One card only in hand for Nico Christensen. I think we might take you back across to the other semi-final like uh, right idea. now. Um, and we'll keep an eye on this one for you. Of course, you'll see game three. And certainly, if Christensen fights his way back into this one, uh, we'll give you that. But right now, let's take a look at Su Ching Kuo. Uh, you can keep an eye yourselves uh, on Duke down at the bottom uh, against Christensen, but we'll concentrate for now on the early part of game two. Su Ching Kuo against Felipe Tavia Bacera, Jarouse Messenger on the right for the Chilean, up against Burning Tree Emissary and Centaur Healer from Kuo. So we do see that Kuo has boarded into the, uh, the life gain value creatures plan. Mm -hmm. This uh, this human reanimator deck has the ability to board into Restoration Angel Centaur Healer and Thrag Tusks and just grind its opponents out as well. Uh, he's also well served to keep the combo in though. And I'm sure it's still in there. By the way, when you say grind the opponents out, you're talking about in the conventional, uh, yes. I just get a bit bigger than you and then I turn my creatures sideways. <laughs> yeah, plan A is also to grind them out. Sure. Yeah, so yeah, you're right. Uh, <laughs> thanks that's for all right. clarifying oh, no, that. No, that's fine. So, that's uh, quote, quote with six land. Three of them is going to be flashback faithless looting. An abrupt decay goes into hand. A fiend hunter goes into hand. And again, you see the value of these cards that theoretically have a drawback but become an advantage. Faithless looting, you have to put something in the graveyard. Mm -hmm. Oh no, can I really put this fiend hunter in the graveyard? That's awesome. Right. And uh, there goes fiend hunter and abrupt decay, in fact, to the graveyard. 
And now another Centaur healer that puts Quo up to 24. And bottom right of your screen, as you can see, good call to come over here because Reed Duke was in complete control. He took the game. It is 1-1 and we will go back there for the start of game three because Christensen will be on the play yep. with all kinds of potential. 12-1 drops. Any amount of burning tree emissary chains that involve lightning maulers, yep. flint hoof boars, all sorts. So there's a slaughter games here for Felipe. We're gonna get a, we're gonna get a read on what he names what he's gonna name here. Quo. Uh huh. Angel of Glory's rise. It looks like. Yeah. Right. So the Angel of Glory's rise is what was named. So that's gonna take away the combo aspect. Sure. For Quo, but. He still has the straight value aspect that we mentioned earlier. I mean, his creatures are good. You know, cards mm -hmm. like um, like Umbarial Rights on a Thrag Tusk is a plan. <laughs> that that oh, is a sure. fine deck in and of itself. Yeah, and also, given um, what his opponent's playing, a Thrag Tusk isn't just... If it was a Jun Mirror, it would be, oh, well, that allows me to keep parity with your Thrag Tusk. Right. But what actually a Thrag Tusk does for Quo is potentially say... Oh, well, well done, your little diagraph ghouls and little things that are getting in the way. Yeah. I'm actually just bigger than you. That's right. Uh, so it, it, it's quite a big deal, uh, that for him. Absolutely. Uh, Betray, like Blood Artist, Grave Crawler, uh, Dreg Mangler, Drow's Messenger, Diagraph Ghoul, Death Rite Shaman. There's a lot of cards that get outclassed by a, by a Thrag Tusk. Yep. No Thra shame in Thrag that. Thrag Dad is a large man. <laughs> <laughs> He's usually the biggest thing on the battlefield, and also, you know, he provides a really nice um, life cushion as well. Looks like Quo is urging Felipe to uh, shuffle the deck. I always ask my opponent to shuffle my deck at every opportunity, because I always feel bad when something good happens for me from the top of the deck. You want to blame it on them? Uh, no, no, not blame it. <laughs> I want to make sure that they are 100% comfortable, ah. that they, they had done everything right, and there's no possible way I could have done Good. anything wrong. And look, that's just, we're playing proper magic together. Because so many people, especially when they know you, yeah. they're like, oh, go on, it's fine. And I'm saying, it really isn't. Yeah. Please shuffle my deck, right. and let's, let's make it proper. It's also the rule. That too. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good, I, I like that approach. One card in hand for Su Ching Kuo. Looks like it's going to be <laughs> an abrupt decay. decay that's just going to reset the uh, Giraffe's Messenger. But it does allow him to pile in, and that's three, six, eight. No, it isn't. It's five. Tragic slip. Getting minus 13, minus 13, because Giraffe's Messenger triggers the morbid ability, so it's uh -huh. not just minus one, minus one. We go back to Bachera. 18 to 22 has become 13 to 22, and it's showtime in our other match. Let's get back there because we want to see turn one in our other match. Reed Duke, Nico Christensen, what is Christensen going to do? Let's find out. Let's get there. Christensen looks. Here we go. Human. And we are go. Cavern of Souls, Champion of the Parish. Bang. Punch one that from Nico Christensen. Ideal start for Nico. It was a Cavern of Souls, so does wonder what he has Does Reed have an untapped black source and a tragic slip here? That would be pretty sweet for him. It would. He but goes he for Blood Crypt. Okay, turn two. We see at least a land there. Looks like he's drawn Lightning Mauler. Does he have Burning Tree Emissary to power out? Here. Let's That's see. the ideal open for him. It represents seven damage if he has it. Looks like he's going to go with a Champion of the Parish number two. Ah, uh, okay. Pump his Champion with one. Checking now there's a land. It's going to be untapped, so there's more on the way. Oh, man. It's experiment one. All right. Trigger, trigger. So he's got a bunch of huge guys now. Mm -hmm. And then in we go. Okay. So, so not the most explosive start, but a really, really good start for Nico. <laughs> yeah. It was only really, really good. Right. I see a, a Boris charm, I think, uh, sitting there uh, from out of the sideboard oh, uh, okay. for Christensen. So think in your heads when you're watching this. Reed Duke minus four at some point. Right, or that me do reduke minus a removal spell. That's also a possibility. You know, who knew? Bonfire Choices quite, oh wow. Yeah, it's it's a huge beating. Um, oh, and Reed has Stomping a tap land tap. for two, doesn't okay. even have. Now, 
the uh, the Farseek that we were talking about. This is a massive moment. That's a mayor of Averbrook. I think he has a mayor. That and is mayor. Can he dump right his hand here? Oh, Burning this Tree is Emissary. Be huge. Watch this, boys and girls. This is what this deck does. Burning Tree Emissary. Trigger, trigger, trigger. Wow. This is huge turn for him. He's going to have two mana two in man his hand. Two mana still going. He needs more dice. Yes. They're running out of dice in and Canada. And there's more coming. More coming, Reed Duke. So he can play a Mare of Averbrook Here or a Lightning Mauler. Mare of Averbrook. Oh. <gasps> trigger, trigger. So that's a 6-6, six, six, and that's a 5-5. Five, five. This is going to be 11, 12, 13, 14 damage. And he's Three. got Boros Charm in his hand. Oh, my. Now, he can't cast it yet. No, no, no. But, I mean, but, so, but remember, Reed does have things like Thrag Tusk and Huntmaster to get himself out. But it is Game, looking good. Game, set, and match, that's it. bang. That took three turns for Reed Duke. Two turns. Wow. That is unreal. And Nico Christensen is through <laughs> Affinity for Humans <laughs> is what they're calling it down there. We finally that get a smile out of Nico Christensen. Wow. That is insane. You get a look at uh, Jake Van Lunen doing some work for us, and he shakes his head and says, that is awesome. <laughs> Nico Christensen, your first finalist here at Grand Prix Quebec City. You will not want to miss this Huge final. Huge pressure. Oh, he is going to be up. I'm actually like tingling from that one. That was fantastic. He is All right, gonna looks like be. we've got a lot of action here in our other match. Haven't we just? So, reminder. Oh, this is an interesting play. Okay. What Did you see what just happened? This abrupt is abrupt decay, decay on Ravager of the Fells. Right. Because it's... Converted mana cost is non-existent, sure. so you can actually kill that. But there's going to be a response of Restoration Angel, mm. by the looks of things. It does look like that, indeed. There is a lot going on here. Yeah, so we're going to let the dust settle on this sequence. Here. Yeah, a reminder that in this one, Quo leads Pacher at 1-0. to zero. Quo is the reanimator plan. This is the game, though, where already the Angel of Glory's Rises are gone. You yep. And there we go. There you go. <laughs> and just like that... <laughs> Su Ching Kuo becomes your second finalist. He rides the value train in game two. Hey, you know my Angel of Glory's Rise combo? Didn't need it. This was not a Slaughter Games game, it turned out. I just make the value. Su Ching Kuo. Wow, so he's in the finals. And Nico Christensen are your Grand Prix Quebec City finalists here in Standard. Wow. No compromise aggro against the human reanimator it's human on human <laughs> but not as you know it yeah wow